Well, howdy, howdy, my buddy Seth. How's it going, man? Hey, man, what's going on? How are you doing? Oh, oh, doing well, doing well. Man, you are in Berlin, Germany, and oh, man, I wish I was right there with you. Uh, yeah, it's a little cold today, but yeah, it's, it? been, it's, it's yeah, it, no rain, though. No rain. It's which, so any day it doesn't rain in the winter, you know, <laughs> we'll take. That's true. And I know firsthand Berlin in, in the wintertime, it is freezing when you got that rain on top of that oh and, yeah uh, yeah it's it's a different kind of cold usually i mean it's it's been fine this like february has been fine a little cold but it's the wind the wind that comes through like the buildings you know and oh, the wind yeah. is what gets you you know you can i can deal with the cold i can deal with you know 35 degrees so as long as it's not raining or not windy you know that's the wind makes a whole big difference it, it really, really does. Uh, first time I went back to back to Berlin in uh, 2008, um, I, t I had my wife with me. It was a rainy, cold April day. It was probably, mm -hmm. in fact, it was April 9th. It was a uh, nine April uh, 2008, and uh, and it was freezing that day. It, it was miserable, especially for my wife. She she hung in there, yeah. but but uh, it, it was it's it no was, fun. Uh, no, no, no fun at all. No fun at all. But we made it fun. We 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 made it. We went all over the place. Went over to uh, Rajasthan, and uh, a couple of museums and stuff like that. And, and what? Yeah, you just got to stay inside, as uh, as the Germans say. Uh, well, ich bin wir sind nicht auf Zucker. We're not made of sugar. So we, we won't, <laughs> that's we right. Melt. That, that's that's right. Or Berliner, not made out of, made out of donuts, right? You know, when <laughs> the East bin not Berliner. <laughs> well, what's funny about that is nobody thought he meant jelly donut, right? Like in Berlin, they don't call the jelly donut a Berliner. They call him Fankuka. And so when, when he said that, like, I know, like, I know it's the whole thing, but it wasn't ever a thing here. Like other people, non-Germans are like, oh, uh, he said he's a Berliner. He's, but no, it was, it's, he, everyone knew what he meant. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's fan kuka. It's fan kuka here. Oh, fan kuka. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's good stuff. Which means pancake. So it makes no sense. <laughs> right? It's it, it makes no sense for this jelly donut to be called a fan kuka because <laughs> that's a pancake. So I don't, I don't, I don't whatever. No, but <laughs> just let's just call it cooking. <laughs> cooking. Yeah, yeah, all right. Cooking. Well, folks out there listening, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you uh, just a little little uh little heads up here. Uh I'm, I'm introducing my buddy Seth. Uh, met him uh, in, in person one time, but over the waves, over YouTube waves for uh, probably three, four years now. Yeah, and uh, I, I, yeah, it, time flies, doesn't it? Mm. And uh, we're going to get to how Seth got in Berlin, but Seth, he uh, not only has a YouTube channel. Oh, let me let me describe the YouTube channel. An awesome YouTube channel. There he is behind me right there on the screen, as you can see. Uh, but he also, he, he does uh, Berlin uh, travel guide stuff. Right. So you, 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 he's a travel guide in, in Berlin and we're going to talk how he got to Berlin and whatnot. So before I even get started, if you ever think about going to Berlin, contact Seth right here. OK, so, and that's his channel name, Seth in Berlin, as you can see down here on, on the description. And I'm going to have the link down there. You'll be able to see it and you'll be able to contact my buddy. But uh, Seth, now now we set the stage. We set the stage. All right. Tell everybody, uh, where are you from? Are you German? I am not. Well, I am from Dallas, Texas, born and raised. Go Cowboys. Um, oh. Went to, uh, let's see, my pedigree. Give my give my CV here. I went to, uh, to uh, University of Maryland to get my bachelor's degree uh, in history. And then... And well, okay. Before that, I, I joined. I, I I messed around for a few years. Joined the Air Force, and got stationed over here in Germany at Spain Dahlem Air Base in 2000, 2000 and two thousand four. Got my degree. Got out. Went to law school at the University of Arkansas, and uh, graduated there in two thousand eight. Practiced law for twelve years. Realized I didn't want to die doing this, and decided to make a change and that's how i got here essentially covid happened um i decided to go get a master's degree and 
thinking about the unbearable weight of the student debt that I already had going to getting more school in the US was just unthinkable. So I came here and here in Germany, it's essentially free to get your master's degree um, or bachelor's too, but it, it's harder for a, a foreign non-German speaker to get a bachelor's, bachelor's than it is a master's. And so I came over, I found a, I found a master's program and came over. Basically it's free. I pay like 300 euros a month. I'm sorry, 300 euros a term. So every like wow. four months I pay 300 That's pretty euros. pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And that pays for, that pays for a public transportation pass, which here is like 250 euros a month. So it's free. <laughs> you know what I mean? Essentially. Right. So that's how I got here. Um, it's obviously a little bit more complicated than that, but um, just COVID made me decide I want to do something different and make a change. Yeah, you know, and, and I've always liked Germany. I've always liked. I've always wanted to live in Europe. Uh, admittedly, Germany was not my first choice. Although I, I lived here and I, I I did like it, my first choice was to go to Paris because I love Paris, but. I couldn't figure out a way to get it done. It was harder to get a master's degree. It's harder to get a residency in France than it is in Germany. And so that's, you know, the opportunity was here and, and I've grown to, I've grown to really like it here. So, yeah. That's awesome. Now, how long did you live in Germany uh, while, while you were stationed, stationed there? In I was here from 2000 to 2004. So four years. <laughs> and I was married at the time, young. I think, gosh, I was 25 when I got here, I think 24. And so didn't take full advantage of the time, I feel. We traveled, but we didn't travel enough. You know what I mean? Like, I just remember, you know, you get the 30 days leave every year, right? Right. And I remember one year we took 30 days to go home and um, for like a wedding, I think. So I'm like, now looking back, I'm like, why did I use 30 days to go back to home? Why did I do that? I could have traveled somewhere, you know, I could have taken two weeks and then, but you know, married, you, you, you sometimes got to do things you don't necessarily right. want to do. Yeah, <laughs> so, but you, you, yeah. you, you found your, your, your love of Germany even back then, even though you, you, you aspire to go to Paris. So what was I love Germany? Yeah. Yeah. What was the ultimate decision to, to come back to, uh, Germany. So, I mean, it, 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 it came down to where can I go to school and not have to pay for it? Go to university, get in trouble. I get in trouble with my German speakers when I say go to school because that implies elementary school. But um, yeah, I, 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 I came to go to, to, go to university. Um, ultimately, that was an excuse to get to Europe. And, and, you know, Germany is like dead smack in the middle. You can go everywhere from here easily. Um, I, 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 you know, this is a philosophical thing. I don't like saying I love a place. I like it here a lot because mm -hmm. um, I don't love land. I love things that they stand for. You know what I mean? I'm not to be pedantic, but I, I like it here a lot. Um, there are things I don't like. Things you do not see when you when you're visiting that you deal with living here that drive you up the wall, but right. overall, yeah, overall, I'm I'm extremely happy here, and I would never want to live anywhere else. That, that's awesome. At least for the time being, yeah. So more or less, that, that was a good decision you made. Ah, right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, when you first came to Germany, uh, you went. To, you were down in uh, Bavaria. Yeah, I was at, in Bayreuth, Upper, Upper Thuringia. Thuringia. Um, yeah, I was in Bayreuth. If you know, if you know Bayreuth, you know Bayreuth. But I don't Absolutely. know. If, I don't know if many people do. It's the home of Wagner. If you know, yep. you know. It's the home of Wagner, um, who is an interesting, interesting fella. But yeah, um, it's, it was a pretty city. It's a pretty city. Um, and it's it's just uh, during COVID, it was a ghost town because everything was shut, everything was closed. So living in a city with sixty thousand people who 
the English speaking population of, of Bayreuth is a lot different than the English speaking population of Berlin. Let's just put it that way. Mm. And then I didn't know any, any German. So pretty isolating, pretty isolating to, to be during, there during COVID and, and all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I, 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 while I did enjoy my time there, I was, I, I, I wanted to go somewhere else. <laughs> right. You have some, uh, pro- some, um, shower problems, didn't you? Some the shower problem in your apartment there. Oh my right? God. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, the first apartment I lived in. Okay. So the first thing you have to realize about ah, earbuds, first thing you have to realize about German apartments, they're weird. Like they have like, like all of them, like the one I have now doesn't have a sink in it. Like who doesn't, who doesn't have a sink in their, <laughs> but then my, my bathroom in my first apartment when I moved here did not have a shower. The shower was in the kitchen. <laughs> like what? who has a kid? They just stuck. They had to stick it somewhere. So, and it was this electric, it was an electric shower. You had to turn it on to pump That's the water and to get heat. Yeah, yeah. Or electrifying get, more indeed one. Oh. You'd get hot water for like five <laughs> minutes if you're lucky. So you're like power. It's a power shower. It's an army shower. You know, you you get in, you scrub for 30 seconds, you get out. Get out. It's quick. Yeah. And get out. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's it, – and then one day, so one day I and, – and, and I lived in this building um with some extremely bavarian fellas um, none of these people spoke english okay oh. none of them and um bavaria parts of bavaria can be a little bit different um it's for it's more conservative as in people are more religious more it's just a more conservative area mm-hmm. and there tends to be a little bit i don't want to i don't want to speculate but these guys didn't like foreigners even me i mean i i i'm the right kind of foreigner if you know what everybody I'm likes seth now I, I, what, but what, what could be the yeah problem? these guys did not like me because i didn't speak the language because i was not from there and so one day i'm taking a shower i mean i felt for instance one day it, it, we have gar- we have recycling here. You have to like I six different things of recycling. And you have a yellow bag where you put your plastics and whatnot in there. Well, one day I came out, I came home and I had taken my trash out. I came and my trash bag was sitting in front of my door um, with a note that said there was like something in it that wasn't supposed to be in the yellow bag. So these people like watch you put the trash in the trash can and then oh, wow. like monitor yeah so it was it was a fun place to live so one day i'm taking a shower turn on the water take a shower i forgot to turn on the pump i forgot to turn it on but the water comes on without turning it on it just doesn't pump out so i flooded my kitchen oh yeah And, and the um the I lost my train of thought. Um, I flooded the kitchen, and it's not made to have a shower, right? It's not like water. It's not made for a shower. And so it went down into my neighbors. It was a mess. It was a mess. Fortunately, I, I got – they had to, like, come in and, like, basically tear out all everything in the kitchen and uh, redo it. So they were like, if you want to move out, you can <laughs> So I was like, "Yes, please, thank you." And wow. so, did they find you for that? Did they? Did they find no, you? No, no, no. I mean, I, I, I had my deposit. You know, they kept my deposit, <laughs> but you know, whatever, it was fine. I had insurance. I had insurance, and I, I gave it to my insurance company, and they're like, "It's not on you. It's on them." And so, I think oh. they even denied, denied it. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I'm like, I'll leave it up to them to fight. But yeah, the, that was a that was a fun experience. But then from there, I went into a basically a student apartment complex, which, it, I mean, it was small. Thirty, my apartments have gotten progressively smaller as I moved to Germany. Um, 
34, like the one I had in by the first one, that one, I was like 56 meters, which is give or take like 650 feet, square feet. Um, the, the next one, the student apartment was one room. It was one room, has the bed. Everything is one room, little kitchenette bathroom. It was 34 square meters, which again, like 300 and 350 square feet. And then when I moved here, my first apartment in Berlin was 18 square meters. Wow. 18 square meters is smaller than a hotel room. It's yeah. like it's like 150 square feet. Tiny. Little kitchenette, little bed. It, it was tiny, but it was fine. I was and I paid like I was, I was 740 surprised. euros. 740 okay. euros a month, which is a lot for here. Um for that size, it was it was pricey. It was in uh, Friedrichshain, which is uh, in inside the loop. If you if you know Berlin, you have inside the loop and outside the loop. Inside the loop is like the intercity, not inside the city, and it's like more popular. People want to live there. Outside the loop is like um, suburb sort of. And so, uh, if you want to live, if you want to be like young and and see all the things, you live inside the loop. I, um, but nobody can afford to live inside the loop or nobody can find an apartment inside the loop. So, wow. um, yeah, it was inside the loop. It was nice. Um, but then it was just so expensive. So I found something you're, you're close to everything. You're, you're, you were in the loop. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, but it's funny because yeah, you know, have you, have, have you ever, have you been down Karl Marx alley? Yes. Um, I lived on Karl Marx alley. Really? And so right by, you know, the two buildings that go like this, across each on, on both sides of the street they're like um they look like church tops yes they're like steeples yeah i i was right there in that building right there at that that building. House. um it was great it was a great location i loved being there it now, wasn't yeah how, how did you not i mean interrupt how did you huh? go from um uh, i call it beirut but it's beirut beirut um, rob Royce. How did you leave there? I mean, what made you think to go to Berlin? What what changed your mind to to come to Berlin? So, all right. So, I was in the first master's program I was in at Bayreuth was history and economics program. I am a historian. I don't know. I don't know economics, but they're like, well, you can take these economic classes the first term, first two terms, and then you'll take history classes the second two. Um, so I took the economics classes and I did horrible because I don't like economics. I'm not an economics person. I'm not a math person. I'm a historian. And so uh, I was like, I can't do this program. So I started looking at um, a history program, like a, a, a more traditional history program. They have a what's called the global history program, which is just sort of like world history, but different. We don't need to get into it. But um they have one at Bayreuth. So I was like, well, I'll just apply for that and I'll just switch. And um, the the so I applied, did an interview. They talk, talked with the people. They're like, why do you want to do this? I'm like, well, because I, I suck at economics. And um, they're like, okay. So did the interview. I got an email that said I didn't get into the program. So I was like, what? All right. So then I applied for the program here. And then I got in here. And but then probably like two weeks later, I got an email. I've got a letter from Byroid saying I did get in. So the the email that I was sent was a mistake. So I got into both. So I was at that point, I was like, well, do I want to stay here or do I want to go to Berlin? Like, I mean, it was almost a no brainer. Like, right. I didn't move to Germany to live in a small town. Like, I didn't move to Europe. I wanted to live in a capital city essentially Paris, London, Berlin, wherever. I just wanted to make that goal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so now here I am. Uh, I don't know if I'll stay here long-term after this. We'll see. It all depends on what I do next, but yeah. That's, that's awesome. That is awesome. So you're in Berlin and, and uh, you know, I, I've uh, been to Berlin many, many times over the years. Not as much as I, now I get to Southern Germany more. Uh, yeah, everyone does. There's, you know, I was stationed in Schweinfurt, you know, Schweinfurt, Germany, which is near Baumburg and, and all the other places. Yeah. And uh, so we, we would deviate. And when I was stationed here, I, I couldn't get to Berlin. Uh, you, you had to have a duty 
uh, duty pass to get on the duty train to, to get there. Now, I've actually, I, I saw the Berlin Wall from a distance. There was a certain point where we could stop and we, we could look and we, we, we could see from a distance. And, and it was all gloomy. No matter what time of uh, the yeah. year I went, it was always gloomy on that side. It was like there's a line that went across, and, and uh, not necessarily at the wall, Mark, but the uh, right now it, it was just different, and and uh, and I could never get to it, um, and I can I can never get a pass there. You have to have a certain you have to have orders uh, to go so there. So this and, was pre ninety one, yes, pre ninety. Yep, yep. I, I was there uh, in uh, back in the eighties. Uh, I was also there in the seventies as a kid because my. I thought uh, you were like thirty five, man. So yeah, oh yeah, thirty four. <laughs> okay. So, uh, add, add 20 years. <laughs> but, uh, we, we, uh, I was there as a kid in the seventies. Uh, uh, I lived in Gießen for four years, Gießen, Germany. My dad uh, was a U.S. army as, as well and re retired and, and, um, uh, and we were in Gießen, uh, Germany. That's where I had my first spaghetti ice. Nice. Uh, in yeah. Gießen, yeah. Germany at eight years old, uh, right, right there. And uh, so, but my dad, he was always, let's go, let's travel almost every weekend. Uh, especially Saturdays, Friday and Saturdays, we were gone somewhere. Uh, like, I, like my first Christmas market was Nuremberg. You know, my mom, my mom had to work that Saturday. She worked at the PX, and uh, she had to work that particular Saturday. Uh, and and then um, my dad says, "Well, uh, Darren and I, we're, we're we're going to Nuremberg. It's first Christmas market." And uh, so I got memories of my dad, God rest his soul, uh, of going to Nuremberg as a kid and uh, with, with my dad. But uh, so. But, but we would we would go all over Germany and and my dad took me to that's how I knew about that point where you could go. Uh, when I went to 80, I showed my buddies, man, we could we could see it from a distance. So we took a train in that area. Uh there we could we could get close to uh Spandau. There was a stop off in Spandau and uh, and uh get off there and, and you walk maybe a hundred yards and, and you could see it. You could see it from up a distance. The, up to the river, right? To the hovel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that's how close you can get. But yeah. since 2008, when I went, when I went back to Germany, took me 19 years to get back in Germany. I, I, I finally came back in 2008, my wife and all that, and my, my buddy, and my with me. I've been back to Berlin probably 12 times uh, all together. Um, so I can't make make it to Berlin every time, um, but um, I'm gonna I'm gonna change that because uh, you know I, I like Berlin too. Um, um, in fact, I'll be there this year too, and I'll, I'll let you know when exactly. Nice. Cool. Uh, so uh, maybe, um, you know, you'll be the latter, but I, I'll get with you and let you know exactly when when I get there. But uh, yeah, so got, got so much to offer for sure. I was gonna say the 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 you, you, the gloom that you mentioned is partly like real. Like, I think we do have a tendency to look back on it, like, because of the system, thinking, oh, it was, you know, gloomy. But it was real because East, East Germany, this is, I don't, this is not a history podcast, but uh, East Germany is, oh, yeah, that's good. Used, East Germany used a, they, they, they were lacking in, in natural resources. Like the Ruhr Valley, which before the war is where, all the coal was produced. It was the, it was the metal fact works and all of that stuff was in the Ruhr Valley. That's in West Germany. So East Germany had to use this like cheaper, ver cheaper coal that burnt really dirty. And so it really was more dirty because they had to use this dirty coal. Um, so that coal, like it, it literally was more polluted than, than other areas, especially around Berlin when you're so many people, you know, Right, right, and there wasn't like it didn't stop at the wall. You know, there wasn't a. Yeah, it kept going. You know, yeah, yeah. It went into West Berlin. You know, so yeah. I, I I think about West Berlin in the eighties a lot. I think about Berlin in the eighties a lot. Um, just how how um, amazingly weird it had to have been living here then. About freedom, um, man. <laughs> like it, it was it, West Berlin in the eighties was. 70s, 70s, 80s, 60s, even 70s and 80s, really. I mean, you had David Bowie here, you had Iggy Pop here, you had the Peshmo came in the 80s. And yes, here. yes, like, they did. You had all of these, like it, it was, it was, it was the city of lost toys. Because if you wanted to live in Berlin, like you had to want to live in Berlin. There was no reason to live here. 
unless you wanted to, right? Because there was no industry here, not really. No businesses were investing money in, their, in to have offices in Berlin when they didn't know what the future held, held for Berlin. And so you, you you chose to live here. You were you were a rebel, a lot of rebel, a lot of anarchist, a lot of people who didn't fit in in West in West Germany proper lived here. So it, it, it was a weird, strange place to be. And then you always, always see that wall. Always. You're driving down the road and you see that wall. Had to be weird. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. I, I, remember, I remember seeing it from you know a distance and, yeah. and everything. Now, see, uh, not not funny. I almost said funny story. Uh, true story. Um, we we were in charge of the Czech border. Okay? So my unit... Uh, being an army, we would uh, do border patrol on the Czech side. So we called we called Berlin Hollywood because they're they're in the city, and we're right. out in the middle of the woods with uh, a rusty bob wire, and uh, with maybe 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 a half a magazine uh, full of uh, bullets, <laughs> and and a key to go get some more just in case something happens. That like, right that makes sense. And, uh, and, uh, but uh, something happened. You were you were you were you were just there to speed bump to slow them down a little bit. <laughs> exactly, and they give you a key. One person had the key. One person had the key to go get open up all that ammunition box. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, I feel really safe. <laughs> but but uh, a, lot, a lot of wild. a lot of memories there. So yeah, I, if you want, I, honestly, so let me get over here real quick. Yeah. There we go. I am. If you want to know more about East Berlin. Read this book, Beyond the Wall. If you can Beyond see the that. Wall. Okay. Beyond the Wall by um, Katja Hoyer. Really good book on the history of East East Germany. Um, very, very little is written. Just wrote it down. Yeah, very, very East Germany. The study East Germany. And she, I think she grew up in, in former East Germany. I think she's my age, maybe a little younger, actually, I think she may be like 40. Um, but so she grew up right in that time where the wall was coming down. And so I think she was from East, East Germany too. So she has a very interesting perspective, history professor. I can't remember where, maybe Leipzig, yeah, um, history. but yeah, check it out. It's a good book. I, I I'm, I'm, tur I'm turning your podcast into a history, history. Channel. Yeah, hey, no, that's all right. That's all right. Cause I, I love this stuff, you know, and uh, back and but before we go uh, any further, I enjoyed that time we met up in, in Berlin and we went to that old lookout, the Tingle. Uh, was it uh, Teufelsberg? Teufelsberg. Yeah. Yeah, that was so cool. I I enjoy that so much. Yeah. Uh, tell, tell, tell what that is. And Teufelsberg is a, is a, is literally means like like Devil's Mountain. So it's like you remember that old kid show like Escape from Devil's Mountain. I think there was an old TV like kid show. Yes. Oh yes. Um, Teufelsberg. Um, it was a CIA spy station, and it's on one of the highest points outside of Berlin in, in one of the suburbs in uh, Grunewald. And there, Berlin, this area of Brandenburg is a swamp. It's flat. There are no there are no hills. There are no mountains. It's flat. So ah, my nose. Anytime you see a mountain, a hill like that. It's made out of rubble. So that hill was made out of rubble from the war. Um, so, yeah, and it's it, 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 so they, it looks like they just one day just left it, just left it. And in Berlin, things don't sit empty. Artists come in. When there's an empty building, artists oh, come yes. in. Boy, do so artists came in, painted murals on it, very much a lot of street art. It's it's really cool. Um it used to be free. I charged us last time we went there, like yeah, five years or something, right? Yeah, seven, seven yeah, like, I don't even know if like they were authorized. I think maybe they just like set up a bench, a booth, probably. You know? Probably, um, but yeah, it's 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 really cool. It's it's in Grunewald, outside of Berlin. It's like a suburb of Berlin. It's part of Berlin, but it's on the outskirts, um, which is interesting because in Grunewald. If you get off at the Grunewald Espan station, there's a memorial uh, for uh, deep, the, the deportations there at Gleis 17, track 17. Um, yeah, they've turned it into uh, a memorial for, it was the last stop out of Berlin for, for German Jews going east. 
are being deported east to to Auschwitz and Riga. And um, really good memorial there at at Grunewald. I didn't even think about it when we were there <laughs> to, to show you that. But wow, um, that is, yeah, that is so awesome. I I, I, I love that. I love. Yeah, that. it's really cool. Now, I haven't been back. I need to go back. I haven't been back. Uh, hey, well, well, let me know. I, I, I'll have to go back. Uh, let's talk about uh, your your um, travel guide experience. Yeah, tour guide. Yeah, I uh, or tour guide. Yes, tour guide. Let me get the right. I, uh, I started. I started tour guiding two years ago, a year and a half ago, and I do private tours. Uh, and we, I offer. I work through a company called With Locals. And it's a private tour company. I have a profile. I'm sure Darian can link it in, in, in the notes. Um, you can go to the profile. It shows the tours that I offer. Um, basically, I offer like four or five different tours. Or, and if you don't see something you like, you can like request me. I'll, I can make one. Um, just do whatever you want, basically. Um, I, I, do a, uh, I do a World War II tour that's four hours long. I take you to the main like important world war ii sites like the reichstag we see uh the memorial to the murdered jews of europe way, folks, that, that's the picture behind us right yeah, there. the reichstag um we see uh we we start in Iranian. we start on Iranian bergstrasse next to the post opt which uh the neue synagogue is right there so um it's like it was the heart of the jewish community in berlin pre-war so I think it's really important to start there, and we walk through the um, through the Jewish, formerly Jewish area, and talk about that aspect of the war, and then um, we move up, see Alexander Plotz and up, up to Den Linden, and it's a good tour. It's a really good tour. It's four hours. I actually had that tour in the morning uh, with somebody, um, and then I do a tour uh, off the beaten path tour of uh, Kreuzberg. Um, which Kreuzberg is one of my favorite areas in Berlin. It's it's a very mixed area um, with uh, immigrants and and Turkish immigrants, and um, it's being gentrified. So you have all of, and then a lot of like old world, like parts of of Kreuzberg are old Berlin money. So you have like this weird mix of like hipsters and Turkish people and and rich people. So it's all kind of like this really interesting mix combined um, together yeah yeah and i do a, a highlights of hidden gems tour which is the name we see the highlights and i show you some hidden gems and then uh what else do i do i do an intro tour that's like a year uh, in a year and a half and uh, an hour and a half and then basically whatever you want if you if you don't see anything you like you can just like send me a message and say hey i want to see this this and this and we can set something up that's so like, cool i did like a two two day tour with this mom and son they were from england and he had to take uh i can't remember what they're called in in england there's a there's a test you have to take um to go like from like our equivalent to like junior high to see to like senior high um i can't remember what the test was called but they wanted to do this tour that was based on a class trip that they were that they were doing he didn't want to go on the class trip he just wanted to go with his mom and um so well, she gave mom. me the itinerary yeah um she gave me the itinerary and it was like two days so like it like we had like a 12-hour tour which was a lot of work and tiring but it was fun like yes. we went to vonze we went to the the, the house uh, the vonze house where the vonze conference was held which if you if you know your world war ii history the vonze conference is basically when the final solution was was um, finalized, right? Um, I don't I don't like that word, but uh, I know. yeah. That's... And then we went to uh, then we went to Sicilian Hof, which is where the Potsdam Conference was held with Stalin and and uh, Harry Truman and Churchill, mm -hmm. and then Clement Attlee after Churchill got booted. Really funny. Churchill lost the election during the Potsdam conference. So he had to like leave the conference and the guy who beat him came. It, he was so humiliated. Oh, anyway, yeah. back to history. And then it was so much other things. So it, it was fun. It was a good time. So yeah, that's my, that's my tour guide business. I, I'm rambling now. That's right. Yeah. So uh, the, the length of your, 
of your 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 guide day, your your your, your tours are based on the person what they want to see. So do you have yeah, like, I, I got a three hour block, I got a two hour block. Which one do you want, yeah. or you, you just look at what they want, or we can do way? you know we can do whatever. I think three hours is a, is a good length. Four hours, like the World War II tour, four hours is a lot. It's long. I mean, it's like twenty thousand steps, so it's it's long. Oh, wow. And I think it depends on your interest level, right? Like, um, there are people that say, "Oh, yeah, I'm really into history," and then we get like two and a half, three hours in, and they're kind of like done. Like, you can only. I think there is such thing as like horror overload like you can you can you can at some point you just can't take any more in right. and so you know um but then there are people that are like know every battle and every you know unit and you know and we have like these conversations you know so i, I kind of try to tailor you know what we talk about to like a, a, a level of interest you know what i mean sure sure um gotta fill and, it out and yeah see. and like three hours but i think three hours is a good is is like the max most people would want to do i see what what are the peak times what what, what, what are the, the 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 most times that keep you busy oh gosh uh probably april through may june july august through october april through october and then um, November and December are usually good because people come for Christmas markets. Um, February and January are terrible, slow, real slow. But like, oh, yeah, 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 it's cold. Um, but yeah, probably April when spring break, March, April for spring break. I could uh, summer. I mean, summer is. I I can. I could do as many if I wanted to do three a day. I could probably do three a day every day. I enjoyed, enjoyed your your video. I think you had one titled uh, "Life of a Berlin uh, Tour Guide." Yeah, uh, yeah. That kept you busy. You're you're sleeping. You start sleeping. Then you then you go out and do all your stuff. That that, that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, you know, I keep thinking I'm gonna I'm gonna record a video and like record parts of the tour. Um, that'd be nice. But then I never think about it. I'm too uh, like I'm too focused on like providing information or providing entertainment you know I'm, sure, sure. I'm i'm working you know so it's like i keep thinking oh i should have recorded but then yeah. I, I never i never do right now let me ask you this um this is like an insider right here okay um on, on peak times especially should i book any tickets in advance like especially going to museums or, or anything like that or or is it safe just to walk up there and say let's just buy a ticket if you want to go to any of the museums on museum island you're going to probably need to book at least a day or two ahead. Okay. Um, if you want to go to the Reichstag on peak times, you book as far ahead as you can. Um, like I, I actually booked, I wanted to go to see the Reichstag like Friday, this past Friday. Um, right. I wanted to go up at night to get some photos. Oh, nice. And cool. um, so, yeah, so it's free to go in there. So I, I tried to book it, and the the, the nearest, the, the, the earliest time I could book it was for the 21st. And this Ooh. is February. So if it's in the summertime, I would try, I would look at least like two weeks ahead, ahead of time. Now, the way to get around that, if you, if, if you need to, I think I've not tried it, but I've heard this. There is a cafe at the top of the Reichstag. And if you ha if you go eat at the cafe, get a reservation at the cafe, then you don't have to have a reserv you don't have to book ahead to go up into it. You can oh, you can do it as part of yeah. Um, so that's for the other sandwich and you're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want to eat some really expensive mediocre food, go eat at the right oh, cafe. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, uh, yeah uh, it's like eating at the Fernsey Tour, the TV Tower. Don't 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 don't. Yeah, <laughs> um, big big don't right. Yeah, don't do it. I mean, it's it's expensive, and if you've seen the TV tower, it's really tall. It's the tallest building in Germany. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can see it anywhere, is, right? You can see yeah, uh, it. Yeah. Just look around the corner. There, there it is. The kitchen is in the basement, and so they have to like all the food has to go up and down elevators. To I didn't know that. Yeah, um, it's it's really expensive, uh, and it's so. I, I I had a guest have reservations there the other day and they're like oh we're eating at the tv tower and like i didn't like say anything because i don't have the heart to like 
say, oh, you're going to hate that. <laughs> it's gonna, why, did you, why did you do that? But, you know, and it, it was a, like a 15-year-old kid. Like, whatever. They'll, be, they'll have fun. Um, but, yeah, that's other museums, though. Like, if you want to go to, like, the DDR Museum or, um, like, the Jewish Museum, things like that, the, any of the documentation centers, you don't have to have reservations. You can I remember just I just walked, walked in there. Uh, yeah. You know, just, just went up there. While we're on that subject, now, for years and years and years, you know, well, all, all the time, I'm, I'm, I'm backing up here. I always try to be respectful of, of folks, you know, who wants to bring up the past. Now, I, I love history. I'm, I'm a big history buff, but I don't want to go and put someone's past in their face. You know what I mean? And I was, I was always not afraid of that, but always respected people. I don't want to go there and talk to Germans about World War II stuff or what went up. But over the years, I'm finding that they want to talk about it, you know. Um, to 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 a point because they don't want to want to remember, um, like um, and but also it, it depends. Like uh, I was in Munich having a conversation, and uh, because it's okay to talk about this stuff because we we want to talk about this. But then I was in Frankfurt and, I, and um, uh, he started. Or I didn't say anything. We, we were talking. He goes, "Yeah, Americans they want to know about World War II stuff. We don't like to say anything." So it depends on on, on the yeah, person. It does totally. How is it in Berlin? Uh, how are they, uh, in, say Berliners? Or, or how are they? Um, are they free to talk about the past, especially sure. uh, pre World War II, after World War II, yeah. the wall, and all that stuff? Or, or I mean, think about it. Now we're like eighty. We're we're four generations. We're on the fourth generation after World War II. So like nobody's yeah. alive anymore. I mean, if you are alive, you're in your nineties, probably. Maybe a it could be in the eighties, I guess, and be have been born during the war, but there aren't a lot of people still around. So the generation that lived through the war never wanted to talk about the war, right? And yeah. then, but their grandchildren and their great grandchildren, they are far more open to a acknowledging the past and mm -hmm. acknowledging what happened here, and b talking about it because it didn't happen to them right they're not they didn't live through it and they didn't they aren't, they aren't responsible for it now do they have a responsible they have a responsibility for educating and for yes. keeping the memory alive they have that responsibility like we all do but they don't have bear any responsibility for what happened so right. i don't i mean i don't bring it up with people ever like it's not something that's not something we talk about unless we're talking about it. You know what I mean? Unless we're talking yeah. about the war, unless we're talking about, I'm not, Hey, you your grandfather, face, you know? was your yeah. grandfather a Nazi? I mean, those, those aren't things you ask. Right. Exactly. Um, but I will say, I will say this. I know a number of Germans, especially young people like twenties from my classes. There are an exceedingly lot, uh, exceedingly large number of people who were, Oh yes, my grandfather was he he he, but he he never he didn't support the Nazis. He didn't. Uh -huh. he was, oh yeah, I've heard that. I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, you know, exactly. um, a lot of that. There's a there is there is a bit of that, but Berlin is especially. Um, Berlin is a city like there's a book called um, City of Ghosts, and it's about the memorial. It's about memorialization in Berlin, uh, and Berlin has by far more memorials in the city than any other city i would say in the world it's it's wow. it's i have a i have a a friend from israel who says that he sometimes living in berlin feels like you're living in a mausoleum because there are memor memorials and remembrances of the dead everywhere um and so that is different i think I think, say, like Munich adopted a different approach to rec rec reconciliation and to reconstruction than Berlin did. Berlin, simply from because of the fact that it was a divided city, I think was put on a different trajectory and a different path to reconstruction. But um, it didn't rebuild like Munich rebuilt the way it was. It, it looks pretty much like it did pre-war plus you know modern stuff that they have now but they reconstructed the past they didn't really do that here so it's just a different it's a different approach in frankfurt i mean frankfurt was, 
Frankfurt was built like in, I don't know, a, a short amount of time by the Americans. And it looks like Charlotte, right? It just looks like any other city. Like, does anyone right. ever go to, does anyone vacation in Frankfurt? Does anyone like, do you ever you, go to Frankfurt? You, usually new, uh, newbies, you know, I'm going to go to Frankfurt. I mean, and then, uh, and like you fly Germany. into Frankfurt, right? You fly yeah. in there and then you, you fly to Frankfurt and you go somewhere else. That's kind of like, <laughs> right. Like, yeah. yeah, and Frank, Frankfurt's changed over the years too. You know, uh, um, especially around the uh, train station area, uh, it used to be so pristine. I remember seeing it so pristine. There, there was a, 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 a in, in, yeah, uh, back in the eighties, it, it was. But back then, they had uh, military around too. They had MPs at the at, that will that will that will uh, patrol at the train station, making sure soldiers and airmen. Interesting. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, it, it was a different, it was a whole different ball game. Yeah, different world. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was, it, it, it was crazy. Yeah, but Frankfurt got all the high rises and everything. They decided, yeah. uh, the, the Bugamaster decided, and, and the officials decided to, hey, let, let's let's make it the the uh, what's the finance capital of the world or of, of Germany, yeah. and, and and whatnot. And yeah, I it's love, like, a, like I said, it's Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. It, it, it reminds is. me of it. It's like Charlotte. Yeah, exactly. You know, but, but you know, like, like the past thing, you know, uh, like I said, I, I'm, I'm very respectful. I mean, who will want, will want uh, anyone to come up and say, you know, because the U.S., we have our history, too. Sure. Like, I'm totally embarrassed how folks treated people of other color, colors. How how dare somebody treat somebody because they're, they're, they got a different skin tone? You know, I that that always bugged me, you, you know. And it's part of history. And like you were saying, it's our duty to um, teach. Look, you know, everybody's, everybody's, yeah. you might look different. You might be uh, purple, pink, black, green, polka dot, but we're, 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 we're all the, all, all the same. We're, we're all, we're all human. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, and yeah. I mean, I think the U S could learn, yeah, learn yeah. some lessons from how Germany has approached its past, I think. Yeah. Um, and I think, uh, it's funny, like probably the the most the most preeminent my earbuds are like the most preeminent um, Holocaust museum in the world is probably in Washington D.C. I would say that's probably the the biggest one. That's probably the most uh, known one, right? Um, but there isn't any kind of memorial to genocide of the indigenous or slavery so like why are we why is there a, a, a why i'm not saying you can you can do both but why is there the this the most preeminent holocaust museum in the u.s when the holocaust didn't happen in the u.s right, right. and there's not any place for memory of these other play other things now there is in the different areas like uh, in uh, where Martin Luther uh, Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. was sure. uh, yeah, and there's uh, another one that I is the Black um, History Museum. I, I, I wasn't prepared for. I, I, the, no, I, there, there, this there, is kind there, of there's a big, big off of travel guide. <laughs> it's a, it's silver, silver rights, and and I, I like to go to that uh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. But, yeah, there are a few, um, but like uh, there isn't a museum. There isn't. I mean, there is a there is a Black History Museum. I think I can't remember the exact name of it. Yeah, but there isn't. There isn't anything like like uh, the Holocaust Museum for slavery or right for the. I mean, I think there's an Indigenous museum in Oklahoma, um, and there is a memorial in Tulsa for the Tulsa race riots. Um, where black wall street was burnt, but I don't think there is any kind of like overarching, like, like there is at the Holocaust. And there could be a, a lot of reasons for that. you know, I mean, the Holocaust is a singular event, right. But, um, so is slavery. <laughs> so is that's our that's genocide, right. you know, exactly. anyway. now, now let's, 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 let's go back to Berlin. We're in Berlin. Yeah. Say you're talking to someone right now. Someone's right now listening. Hey, you know what? I'm going to contact Seth. He knows what he's talking about, and I'm going to go there and I'm going to contact him 
to uh, to sh uh, show me and my family around. What would you tell them if they were co coming to, to Berlin in June? What would you tell them to wear to be comfortable? Bring you some jeans, but also bring you some shorts and some t-shirts and polo shirts. I mean, whatever you want to wear in the U.S., wear here. I mean, it's like I remember when I first came in like 2000, moved here. The whole thing, like Rick Steves, I mean, you know, Rick Steves, travel guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, his whole thing back, especially in the early 2000s, was like, you want to blend in. You want to look like, wear khaki pants and like you don't want to stand out like an American. I'm like, well, everyone's going to know you're American anyway, man. Like it's just like it oh, doesn't yeah. matter. Everyone's going to know. Right. And uh, but the world has become so much smaller today because of the Internet, because of YouTube, that everyone kind of just wears YouTube. the same things. What's YouTube? Yeah, what is YouTube? Everyone wear everyone dresses the same. Basically, here the U.S. Everyone kind of everyone. I fifteen year old boys have the same haircuts here and in the states. Like it used to, there used to be a difference. Like, but now everyone has the flop, like you know, like the shaggy heads and right. You know, right. My, my nephew has this haircut. I'm like, I saw that this kid down the, you know, on the on the S bomb with that same hair. Like everyone is the same because they all watch the same YouTube and the same same TV shows and stuff. Just well, yeah, funny, wear t-shirts, wear jeans. All right. F funny story. Now, you know, and I'm very careful on that. You know, I, I'm gonna go over there where all my gator stuff. You know, I'm a, I'm a yeah. Don't right? do that. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. No, I have. I've worn it and stuff like that. But, but nobody, I, I nobody would care. Be, it depends on where where I'm at, right? Yeah, nobody but, would uh, care. But 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 I, but I, I try to say try to blend in. You know, you you don't want to you know uh, attract any pit pockets or anything like that. I want to I'm gonna talk about that too. But uh, yeah. there's this one guy I was walking in um, a party cushion, garments party cushion, but I was on the party yeah. cushion side. And, uh, and this guy had an LSU hat on. So I, okay, I I, I, I profiled him. He he's, must be American, right? Naturally. And and LSU, we call LSU. It, we're, we're rivals, yeah. Florida Gators and LSU. So I went to tell him, hey, man, how about them Gators? Us? Gators? I'm like, oh, <laughs> I was talking about your hat. I displayed so he goes, I don't even know what it is. I just <laughs> liked it. He, 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 he said he uh, he got it online. He goes, I just liked it. And, uh, and, uh, and whatnot. That's so that, funny. That hilarious. So, <laughs> so you see it with like the Yankees hats a lot. And like, yes, I noticed that. Bulls or, you know, Lakers, things like that. You see that. You see these German kids wearing that stuff a lot. I'm like, you don't have any idea who that is probably but <laughs> right yeah back to that uh pit pocket okay now there's um some cities that have a reputation of pit pockets like paris it, it, oh, yeah. does berlin sure. have that reputation oh yeah for sure i got pickpocketed like uh a year ago and not even a year ago like the summer um i'm pretty sure i got pickpocketed you never really know like i could have just dropped my wallet i didn't feel it like, I, 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 I am careful. I am, a, I am aware. You just got to be aware of your surroundings. Yes. Um, but I had, like, this small little wallet. I had it in my front pocket. I was wearing shorts. And uh, I was about to go to a tour. Uh, I was shadowing another guy because it was a tour I had never done before. And um, I got to – I was going to go to Starbucks and get something to drink. And then I go in, and my wallet's gone. So I went back to the station that I, I had stopped. This oh, was like a, at the Brandenburg Gate. I went to the station before it at uh, like Potsdamer Plots. And I went back there to the bakery that I had gone in to get a little pastry. And I'm like, did you see my wallet? And no. And so I lost my wallet. Um, I didn't feel anything. So, you know, you just, you got, you can be prepared. Just don't make yourself an easy target. Um, I don't think I'm an easy target. I wasn't an easy target, but if they're going to get you, they're going to get you. Like they're really good, you know. Right. Um, if you if you see the people, if you see the people with the uh, with the um, what are they called? Um, they have like the, the um, things with paper on them, little hard, like um, not pamphlet. What's the word I'm looking for? Like. Uh, you put paper on it and then you have somebody sign it and it's like hard. It looks like this. I, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. It's it's like a, a not portfolio. I can't think of the word. It's slipped off the top of my hand. 
but there's, the people walk, <laughs> there's there's people walking around like especially in the tourist areas with these and they want you to sign something they'll like kind of be oh, pushy yes. about signing this yes avoid those people they're obviously they're trying to get your attention they're going to try to scam you scam you in some way either either with uh either with a uh somebody else pickpocketing you or they're going to if you sign it then they're going to like want you to give a donation and they're going to really pester you until you give them a donation they don't oh, do yes. that the, no. there there's some guys there's usually four or five guys not like profiling but they're usually like russian guys that are the same i always see these same five group of russian guys i'm not like being i'm not like being racist these i see these same guys like all over the city and i know they're the same guys because they're very distinct like i know because they're very distinct these guys and um they're playing this um like the 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 game with like three card monty or or the game with the ball and the things and they're like and some guy wins and then he gives them money and then like hey the whole thing is to try to get other people to play but they're all together so like they're just giving money to each other right exactly and avoid all those people if you can just avoid like oh the the one that i found the one that i found out the heart the other day i found this out probably a couple of weeks ago there will be a a, a guy sitting with a cup in front of him right um but he'll be sitting like somewhere really tr- crowded like pedestrians walking and he'll he'll have a clear cup like a clear plastic cup oh boy like a solo cup right and he'll put it further out like almost in the middle of the walking area and then like so when people are walking they can't see it because it's clear so they kick it and then it has a few coins in it but that way you feel bad you feel bad and like you give since you kicked it like you give him more money because you kicked the the thing that's another one that's happened i've seen that like four times in the last two months or so um and it happens typically in the same area on internet landed so things like that just be cognizant of your your surroundings exactly that's 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 very very important now, a uh, question uh, between uh, Munich. Okay, Munich's got a like a transportation car. You, you could go buy mm-hmm. like a three day pass for some amount of time to, to use all the public transportation, buses, S bahn, U bahns, all that stuff. Um, does Berlin offer that? Same. Yeah, that's same. They have. Uh, they, you know, there's a 24 hour card. Yeah. Um, okay. There's probably 36. Uh, and I'm sure you can get up to seven days. I'm sure you can do five and seven days. Um, Usually, was, Berlin is divided into zones A, B, and C. Uh, most everything you would possibly need, unless you wanted to go to like Potsdam where you need C, everything else is like A and B. Um, so you really just need to get A and B. And a lesson I learned a long time ago, make sure you validate that ticket before you yeah, get on. Yeah, validate the I, ticket. Yeah. Ooh, I, I, the guy gave me a break. You know, Of course. You just I mean, have to act like you're dumb, like I do. Yeah. I was like, "What are you talking about?" This is long, now. Now this is back in, uh, I think, my 2009 trip. Uh, I was in where was I? I was in Nuremberg, and everything. And and the guy came around in plain clothes, and he opened his blank, and then had like a like an ID, like an undercover yeah, guy. Yeah. And he goes, what, "What's your uh, your pass?" I'm like, "Oh, I'm I'm confident." Oh, here it is. Oh, validation. I'm like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> yeah. I, was, I, I didn't know. I, I, he goes, "I could find you for this." I said, well, I, I said, well, please don't. I'll, I'll get it validated. Right. Go, it's like a 60 year old fine. It's, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what he said. And, and this is in 2009. So it's probably up yeah. more now. But uh, he, he let me, he let me go. The next station, get off, validate, and then get back on. Yes, sir. You got it. He, he was serious. Uh, too, they, those guys, I think they, they, they're contract workers. I think they get paid a bonus per, um, like, fine they give so they they have really? they have an incentive yeah i think so they have an incentive to uh to give a tickets out um oh, but wow. yeah they're, me. i'll do it. <laughs> i know i know i thought about it i was like that's not a bad gig like yeah. i've probably been checked like and, and you know berlin is not like in munich germany in general i think i don't think there's any place in germany that has like ticket stalls like um or like ticket like like 
to get into the tube in London or the, the metro in Paris or New York City, you usually have to like have a ticket and put it in the machine or oh, yeah, tap yeah. the thing to get in. You know, they don't do that in Germany in nope. general. I don't think. I don't think there's any place that does. I, I never, I, uh, I, I've never saw that there. Yeah, it's 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 uh, an honor system ostensibly, but um, what they found, I, I was doing research on this. Like, why would you why would you do this and not have a what's the benefit? For doing this versus it's called like the I think it's called the the Dutch uh, not Dutch the Danish system I think um, what's the benefit of doing this versus having the stalls and they uh, turns out that they actually create they collect more money this way because people pay for the tickets mm -hmm. and then um, you know more people if the trains can be on time more you get more people flowing through it. It just creates more traffic and creates more customers than than the people that don't pay for it. Um, yeah, and and it's just and the most German answer I ever got was, you know, when 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 somebody asked, well, why don't they just why would why would anyone ever pay for it? And the German was like, it's against the law, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, like follow the rules. <laughs> like okay, like you know. Karl Marx said the revolution will never begin in Paris because people won't cross on the red on, on the cross on the red light. So, you know, they, they love their rules here. They'll follow rules for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Seth, it, it's been uh, wonderful talking to you today. We could talk forever. Oh, no. But but uh, I want to be respectful of your time. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely make this. And I'll be seeing you this year. Uh, I'll, I'll yeah, man. You know. I, I, but you know, let me uh, know when you're coming out. We can definitely have a have a, a spaghetti ice and a donor. You can have your spaghetti ice. I'll have a donor. What, what, did you just say spaghetti ice? Of course, I said spaghetti ice. Did you I see know my, my audience? Facebook, my Facebook group page, uh, German Travel Vlogs and Tips. Yeah. Um, I found a video. Actually, one of my uh, uh, he's, he's a friend of mine, but he's also in the, in the group. He sent it to me. He found a video like from the early uh, Sea War days. Of somebody made a, a a music video talking about spaghetti eyes. It's a kid, and his oh, name's Rabbit. R a b b i t t. So it, it's spelled differently. But if you look back on my uh, uh, German travels and tips uh, Facebook um, group page, I'll put that link down here too. By the way, uh, I know how um, much you love spaghetti eyes, man. You, you got to check that video. It's like two and a half minutes long. Oh, but it, it, it had his whole family involved. It's like a ten year old kid talking about spaghetti eyes, singing about it. It's so and, funny. Uh, oh, it, it, it was great. All this time, because I, I swear to God, I swear, I feel like you're gaslighting me about spaghetti ice. Like, like I feel like you're just leading me on. Like, how I'm like, it's just ice cream. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, but, but it's, but it's, it's the, you now see, remember, I know I, you love it. It's so funny. It's the I memories just, you have with your dad. The memories, yeah, exactly. And, and, and the first absolutely. I get, I know. I'm just, I'm just teasing. I, no, I totally, no, I know, I know. I totally <laughs> get why. Though. Because people, just people like, say that. Well, I don't understand. But, but you get some people who share it too, and they're like, "Oh, you're right." You know, like, I you know. know. Those are the people that I'm like, "It's are you really? It's just <laughs> ice cream with strawberry. It's not. I mean, it's fine. Cream, I, I, fresh. It's, yeah, cream. it's fine. It's good. Cream. It's just like it's ice cream." But no, I, it's funny. I do. I do know how much memory affects how, how things are. I oh, absolutely. Yeah, I I have things like that too. So right, right. Anyway. Now, I have one more question to ask okay. you. Actually, two more questions. And I'm right. going uh, to ask them back to back, and I'll let you answer but back to back, and we'll go ahead and close out. All right. Question. Have you ever ran into any famous YouTubers in Berlin? Part two of the question. Have you ever ran into Diana Vary in Berlin? No. No, I know. No. Um, no. Have you? I have my opinions. Um, yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, I've uh, not run into any YouTubers. That's funny. I've never been noticed either. Um, the closest I ever got was people have, I, I put in my profile that I have a YouTube channel just so people can check me out for my with my my tour guides. All right. I have had people say, hey, we, we got you because of your YouTube channel. Um, we hired you because oh, cool. of that. But I haven't had anyone say, oh, "You're that guy from the thing." I've never had anyone do that, and I've never, I've never, I've never noticed anybody. Um, yeah. I've made plans to meet people, right? Yeah. Like, 
like and do stuff, but they've never come to fruition. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, like I, I don't know. Uh, Diana's fine, but she makes like the same video for me. <laughs> right, right. Don't get me started. Yeah. She's fine. She she has a huge audience. I like Diana and Phil. Have you have you ever seen? Yeah, oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, they're great couple. And they, they respond, they respond to you too. Yeah, they're wonderful. I love I really like them. They're probably my favorite um German content creators. Right. I guess. Do you know now, have, uh, you, have you heard of Passport too? Yeah, yeah. I, I have. I have to meet them. We have spaghetti ice together. Really? Yeah. I can't remember their name. I haven't followed them in a while because their videos tend to be more um, informational. Yeah, like not stuff that I need to know. Right, um, right. And so I like. I don't need to like know the differences in like the videos I make aren't for me. I don't need to know the information that I'm making, right? So I don't need to watch other people. But I like Deanna and Phil because of their travel. I like their travel videos. Oh yeah, they go they go they go all over yeah. the place. They go all over the place. Um, well Seth, thank you so much for being here. And absolutely. uh we're gonna we're gonna have to do this again. Don't don't you agree? Yes. Next time let's talk about traveling non Bavaria. Traveling okay. East Germany, traveling in North Germany. Germany. And Northern, absolutely. Yeah. And speaking of that, I won't get too far. I I, I love that. See, I love uh, Dresden, Leipzig, yeah. uh, Wittenberg. Uh, I spent a lot of time in those places, and but we'll, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, I've been all spending right. a lot of time on the uh, on the Oder, on the uh, on the like German Polish border. Oh with, yeah, right. With cities that were German that are now Polish. Uh, I Pol find yeah. that fascinating. That area wow. is really really cool. We can talk about that another time. We we sure will. Hey, Seth, I'm asking you uh, to help me close out. Okay, sure. we're going to close out in due fashion on, on a count of three. Are you ready? I am. Sure. Okay. Zwei. Dry. Dogs and juice. Oh, yes, sir, Bob. Juice. You got to say it right. Juice. Awesome, awesome. Thank All you right. so much, Berlin. Hey, man. Yeah. I really enjoyed this. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I did too. And I, I just said thank you very much, Berlin. Thank you very much, Seth and Berlin. And we'll thank see you. you shortly.